right, so today we're in the middle of a cam swap in the old beater bomb rot stang. And um, if you follow my channel, uh, you're probably pretty familiar with the car. Um, I won't go into a long explanation of um, the life of this car, but basically uh, it just it sees red line all the time. It's beat on pretty hard on the track. Obviously, it's got a rally cross sticker. Um, it, it mostly lives pretty high in the RPM. I bought this car a little while back and a fella had worked over the engine before me and lo and behold he had managed to put a roller cam in a flat tappet block and he didn't use link bar roller lifters he used factory Ford roller lifters and it was pretty interesting you can see where he drilled uh, into the block for the spider hole down notice on this guy in particular you know this is a flat tappet block and it doesn't have a boss for that so anyway eventually it wiped one of the cam lobes because one of those lifters was able to spin and amazingly it ran quite a long time But um, anyway, that vehicle had an E-cam, so we pulled that out. Kind of a shame that that cam got ruined, but um, it didn't come out of my wallet, I guess. And um, we pulled that out. We threw in a new uh, camshaft from Summit, just a nice, cheap, low-budget unit. Um, you know, mild performance. And today what I want to do is just verify that the push rod length is acceptable. Now, with those uh, roller lifters, he had the right length push rods in there obviously the roller lifter is quite a bit longer than a flat tappet so in effect your push rod is shorter on the roller engines so anyway these push rods came out of this mystery engine that i had gotten it was a truck engine from 92 or 91 or 90 i can't remember but anyway it was a roller block but back then um, in that era they still ran flat tappet cams in the truck so anyway the push rods were set up for a flat tappet unit on a pedestal rocker cylinder head style. So this 84 block is the same, and um, we're gonna go through and verify that our push rods are indeed the uh, right length. So what we're looking for today is we wanna see an acceptable amount of preload on our lifter, or else A, um, if we have too much, it'll run open if our uh, push rod's too long, and if our push rod's too short, it's gonna chatter. So we got a 20 thousandths to 60 thousandths range 20 thousandths being roughly half a turn or so on these 5 16 guys and um, 60 thousandths will obviously be a full turn and a half so anyway in the middle of the cam swap here we got the engine to top dead center and we are on um, i guess we're checking out cylinder one here all right so i think we got the camera set up so you can see everything really well you can see the the lifter down there in the bore and we can see our rocker arm here and we can see the play in this guy so basically what you want to do is you want to adjust your valves, as some people say, on the uh, base circle of the camshaft. Now, reason being, obviously, if you don't do that, uh, that's how you misadjust your valve train. So normally what I like to do is when the opposing lifter is at its full lifted dwell, I'll or <laughs> excuse me, when it's at its full lifted dwell, I'll adjust the opposing uh, rocker arm. So if, we had full lift here on our intake valve, I would adjust our exhaust valve here. But in this case, we're at top dead center, so it's another way. Um, you know, I know we're there because we can see all of our uh, timing chain and everything, so this will be just as good for this purpose. Now, just like what I do with our stud rockers, I'm gonna do the same with our pedestal rockers. So basically, I'm going to spin this push rod while I tighten down the rocker arm, and then when I feel resistance, um, on our push rod, that's when we're going to break out our torque bar and torque it down and see how much of a turn we get out of our torque bar and that'll determine how much preload we have in our lifter. So anyway, I'm just going to run down our rocker bolt here. When I feel the slightest bit of resistance on the push rod, the slightest bit of drag, there we go. It looks like it's right there. We just start to get a little drag. Now I'm going to torque this down and see um, how many turns we make on this uh, rocker and that'll help determine our preload. 
All right, so coming in from a different angle so you can see what's going on. I'm spinning the push rod here, and I'm going to go until we feel a little bit of drag. There we go. There's our point of drag. And then from that point, we just want to see how far we go until it's fully seated. And then at that point, um, we can break out our torque bar. So it's one half. It looks like about at three quarters of a turn here, um, we're fully seated and now we're at the point where when we break out our torque bar, um, <clears throat> we're gonna be at the point of thread stretch now. So um, it looks like we're at about three quarters of a turn. So that puts us in between 20 thousandths to 60 thousandths. Um, anyway, so Really, this is pretty ideal. Um, 20, closer to 20 thousandths, we're gonna hear a lot of chatter. And the closer we get to 60 thousandths, as everything warms up and you have thermal expansion, uh, you could start hanging valves open. So I'm pretty confident with this and we're in uh, pretty good shape. Now, um, generally when you put a high lift cam in, what you're gonna have is push rods that get longer and longer. Your journals, where your cam goes into on your block are only so big, so what you're, can end up have happening is to get a higher lift your base circle of the cam has to get smaller and when that base circle gets smaller obviously our push rod gets longer because we set um, all of our preloads and everything off of that base circle so a smaller base circle is going to equal a longer push rod now you see we got about three quarters of a turn now on a stock cam usually it's about um, a full turn to a, a turn and a quarter on the stock guys. So you can see just with this mild lift cam, we're taking a little bit of that preload off. But Ford was pretty aggressive with their preload and really we don't need to be that aggressive with it. Um, you know, on my stud rocker stuff, I usually go just a half turn and I never hear any chatter on a new engine out of the valve train. And a lot of guys do it this way. So um, we don't have to pattern anything up because all of our geometry is already set. Now, obviously, if you were going to um, roller rockers or something of that nature, you're changing the geometry um, potentially with that rocker. So you're going to want to have to um, go through, and that's where your shims come into place to get the right pattern up on your valve stems. So if you want to see that, I'll drop another video of um, patterning everything up with a, a stud rocker setup. But anyway, for now, I think we're we're good, we came to three quarters of a turn on this guy and the rest of our torque is all gonna be thread stretch. So um, it's not gonna change any of our measurement and really we're looking pretty good. All right, so getting this thing torqued down, these 5 16 bolts go to 20 foot pounds. So, um, so far we're good on cylinder one. Now I'm gonna move through the rest of the engine and something to note as you move through and after you've verified everything, um, you always want to run these uh, 5 16 bolts down either on a cylinder that's on the compression stroke where you're not getting any lift out of either of your rockers or um, you want to adjust the opposing rocker to um, a rocker that's at its max lift. You Really the point here is you always want to um, run these down on the uh, base circle of the cam. If you don't, what you're going to be doing is um, pushing the valve open, which is fine, but these 5 16 bolts are pretty darn weak and what you'll end up doing is bending them or you can even snap them in extreme cases if you have some pretty aggressive uh, valve spring pressure here. So um, obviously I'm in the middle of a cam swap deal here with this guy and I'm going through and making a video of that. So if that's something that interests you, um, obviously I'll have a video and I'll go ahead and link that as well. So um, anyway, Rock and roll, I gotta get rolling.